96 and I'm sitting in a hospital bed staring at my newborn daughter. She's so perfect. I think I've memorized every detail of her face and her scent. I've waited for this moment. Only motherhood is already harder than I thought it would be. I thought I was prepared. I planned a natural childbirth. I dragged my husband to every class and didn't work. And I planned to breastfeed, and now that's not working either. I thought it would come naturally, but we try, and we try. And she cries, and I cry. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, and I don't have any help. My husband doesn't know how to help. And this morning, the nurse comes in and I tell her, we're struggling, and she says, it's okay, I can bring you some formula. And then the doctor says the same thing. That's not what I want. I look at my husband. Do you think we should give her a bottle? And he says, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do either. But I know that I want to take our baby and get out of this hospital. So we go home and I send my husband to rent a breast pump so that I can feed our daughter and on the phone, the lactation consultant is so reassuring. You're doing fine, it's not you, she needs more time. Just keep pumping and keep trying. So we do, we keep at it, and it's exhausting. But finally, she does it, she latches on. She's breastfeeding, and it makes it all worth it. And we join a support group, and I hear from other mothers the same similar stories as mine about their struggles, about needing more help. Several months later, and I'm back at work, and I've fallen in love with breastfeeding. I want to help other mothers. It's my husband's idea. Karen, you should be a doctor. Fast forward three years. I leave my actuarial career behind. I'm pregnant with our second child, and I go to medical school. And I become the doctor I wished for in the hospital that day. And all these years later, mothers are still telling me the same stories. Now, even if you yourself are not a mother, or a parent, or a doctor, what I'm about to share matters to all of us because it impacts our health as a society. No matter your age or your gender, the knowledge you'll gain will inspire you to advocate for babies and their mothers. And we need you because over 20 years in this field, here's what I see. Breastfeeding, is endangered, endangered by inadequate education within the medical profession. And by jeopardizing breastfeeding, we put the health of babies and their mothers at risk. Breastfeeding is the biological norm. That doesn't mean it comes easily to everyone, though. So if we, the doctors, don't know how to help you, the mothers, we may very well set you up to fail. So if breastfeeding didn't work out for you personally, I invite you to not be hard on yourself. You're in good company. Or if breastfeeding wasn't possible for you or just wasn't right for you as a mother, I honor that as well. I'm not here to tell mothers to breastfeed. What I am here to tell you is how we in the medical profession need to better support the more than three million mothers in this country each year who do breastfeed. You see, the evidence in favor of breastfeeding is undeniable. The, American Academy of Pediatrics 2022 policy statement on breastfeeding reiterates what we already knew. Infants who are breastfed have lower risk of illness due to infection. Breastfeeding decreases their risk for asthma, diabetes, obesity, and childhood leukemia. And breastfed babies have a lower risk of sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS. And for mothers, breastfeeding reduces our risk of type 2 diabetes, hypertension, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and mothers understand this. Most want to breastfeed. In fact, 83% of mothers in this country begin breastfeeding when their babies are born, according to the CDC's 2022 breastfeeding report card. 
and yet many of these mothers end up stopping early and not meeting their personal goals. There's many reasons for this, but four of the most common ones fall under the healthcare umbrella. These are difficulties with lactation and latch, concerns about infant nutrition and weight, concerns about breastfeeding and medication safety, and believe it or not, unsupportive hospital practices and policies. So as doctors, we should be taking the lead here to solve these problems, to overcome challenges with mothers, to help them continue breastfeeding and continue providing the health protection for their babies and themselves. Unfortunately, not enough doctors know how to help because the subject of breastfeeding and lactation is a common gap in medical education. In the breastfeeding landscape analysis study published in Breastfeeding Medicine in 2020, only half of more than 800 doctors reported receiving any breastfeeding education during medical school. Without adequate knowledge, not only are we ill-equipped to help mothers problem solve, but we unknowingly cause problems and inadvertently endanger breastfeeding for our patients. Here's three ways this commonly occurs. First, from day one in the hospital, Learning to breastfeed is like other new skills. There's a learning curve. It takes practice and patience. And if a new mother isn't prepared for that, or when breastfeeding gets off to a slow start like it did for me, mothers can easily begin to doubt themselves. And then when those around them, their partners, their loved ones, even their healthcare team also begin to doubt, these people often suggest formula. Here's how common this is. The CDC's breastfeeding report card tells us that one out of five mothers who choose to breastfeed end up using formula within just the first two days of their baby's life. I call this the bottle of doubt, because when we doubt breastfeeding, we suggest a bottle. Think of it like this. Imagine you're running your first marathon, and you're just trying to make it, and you see familiar faces in the crowd. But instead of hearing, great job, you can do it, from them, they say, oh, I don't think you're going to make it. Why don't we give you a ride to the finish instead? This is the message we can send to new moms when they're tired and vulnerable, and we suggest that bottle of doubt. Instead, like the runners, what new mothers need is not a way out with a bottle or a ride to the finish, but instead the encouragement and actual help to find a way through. Now, you still might be thinking, but does that formula in the first two days really matter? It sounds harmless, right? even to doctors, but it isn't. The newborn period is critical for a mother to establish her milk supply. And so each time she skips breastfeeding and uses formula instead, her milk supply goes down. And then she feels dependent on that bottle. It easily becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Even worse, now she feels the blame pointed right at her. You just don't make enough milk when really it was the intervention, it was that bottle of doubt that interfered with and endangered breastfeeding. Next, we as doctors endanger breastfeeding when we give medical misinformation. Here's an example. A breastfeeding mom is prescribed antibiotics for something common like a urinary tract infection. And she asks the doctor, is it safe for me to take this while I'm breastfeeding? And she's told, no, to be safe, you should stop breastfeeding or just pump and dump your milk until you finish. Anyone who's breastfed will tell you it's not that simple or easy to do. So how angry, even betrayed, might you feel when you later find out you could have safely continued breastfeeding or just taken another medication? Now, I believe these doctors think that they're erring on the side of caution, but what they're really doing is erring on the side of disrupting breastfeeding, even when it's not medically necessary. The good news is there are accurate up-to-date resources available to help guide these safety decisions, and you don't have to be a doctor to look them up. And finally, we endanger breastfeeding with the long-held misconception that's prevalent in our country and that's not often talked about, and that is the presumption that formula is essentially equivalent to breast milk. This is the formula fallacy. Because do we consider any other food created in a lab and made in a factory to be the same as a fresh whole food? Of course not. And breast milk is so much more than food. It's alive with immune factors, growth factors, and it's dynamic. It changes over time to meet the needs of the baby. 
So yes, formula is a safe alternative for those who cannot or choose not to breastfeed, but it is by no means equivalent. And when we make clinical decisions based on this fallacy, we endanger breastfeeding. The bottom line is, when our lack of knowledge causes mothers to stop breastfeeding early, we remove the health protections that breastfeeding provides, and we alter the health trajectory of that baby and that mother. And let's not forget the other side of the story, the breastfeeding experience, because mothers truly love to breastfeed, something that's so deeply personal, so gratifying, so empowering, that we are biologically born to do for our babies. So breastfeeding matters, yes, to us as a society, but also to us as individuals. So together, I'm calling on each one of you to put an end to this cycle of endangerment. We all have a role to play here. No matter who you are, you know someone who is breastfeeding or will breastfeed in the future, and they need your support. So fathers, partners, loved ones, advocate for the mothers and babies in your life. Guard against that bottle of doubt. Help her find support and even a second opinion when needed from a lactation consultant, to support group, or doctors like me. We are out there. Doctors, healthcare professionals, we are counting on you. Continue learning. Supporting breastfeeding is the standard of care. So before making any clinical decision that may endanger breastfeeding, ask yourself, am I providing current evidence-based information? Am I supporting this mother in meeting her breastfeeding goals? And mothers, trust your instincts. We can do amazing things like giving birth, like finishing that marathon, or breastfeeding our baby. And each and every one of us deserves the encouragement and the support we need to meet our own personal goals. So let's have each other's backs on this and accept nothing less. Together, by learning about and embracing the human experience that is breastfeeding, we can spread confidence, not doubt, fact, not fallacy, and uplift rather than endanger breastfeeding. Let's all cheer on the mothers and babies starting the race of a lifetime. Breastfeeding is an individual decision, but its success takes a village, an educated village. Thank you very much.